Welcome to the Masters in Motion podcast, where we empower and inspire Masters athletes to reach their full potential. Join us as we dive into the world of CrossFit and showcase the strength, resilience, and determination of Masters athletes. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting your journey, this podcast is dedicated to providing news, education, and inspiration, because we just love this sport. I've got with me today, Rick Stevenson, 2022 CrossFit Games 50 to 50 year old second place finisher. Rick has 15 years of CrossFit under his belt, and technically, Rick Tyler for first place in his rookie year in 2022 and gracefully accepted second place uh, just via the tiebreak. Uh, Rick, I'm so glad to be doing this with you. Thank you very much. Great to be here, Jason. Uh, looking forward to a lot of fun conversation. Totally agree. Well, what we wanted to jump into first was news and updates. Like, What's going on in the CrossFit world? In the past couple of weeks, what's come up, Rick? Well, Certainly, uh, we are getting very, very close to the Open, which uh, yes. gets everybody excited. Uh, all the members of your gym, full participation, lots of uh, uh, lots of anticipation of what's going to come out of the hopper, and uh, we'll, we'll certainly get into that. Absolutely. And you and I were talking before the show, we were just sort of thinking about uh, the Open. I was, for me, the, the Open is one of those things that regardless of the year, I always get nervous about. I, I always have this little bit of anxiety, a little bit like this is this this is the start of the entire thing. The entire, entire season quali yeah. qualification process. Yeah, it's the start. Like this is it. And you know, it, it used to when I was doing the open in twenty fifteen and twenty sixteen and twenty seventeen, twenty eighteen, the open the the scores you got in the open actually were part of your master's qualification process, meaning the scores were cumulative from the open to the age group qualifier. So so workout number one in the open was like do or die. And then workout number two was do or die. It's every one of those counted. And one of the things they changed in 2019, I believe, was that once you got through the open and you qualified for the next round, uh, at the time it was age group qualifiers. Now it's quarterfinals or semifinals. The scores reset. So it makes yeah. the open, at least for me, less pressure and just a lot more fun. Slate. Is that kind of your I experience? I absolutely love that. Yeah, all your where your placement, where you finished the open was uh, a in that placement was your opening score. So out of the top 200 uh, in each age group, if you were 175th, uh, you just had a much higher hill to climb than somebody in the top 25. And now it was everybody awful. resets. Yeah, uh, you. you 10% roughly, I think they count that 10% at the close of week one. They take a look at snapshot the numbers, uh, figure out the 10% cutoff, and it's obviously different for each age group. Uh, you just want to get through healthy. You want to, for me and my gym, I want to uh, participate on an intramural team. I want to have fun with the members. Uh, that's the camaraderie. It is literally the Super Bowl for the majority of our members and uh, make it through these three weeks and then reset our sights on uh, what lies ahead. What's the intramural program look like where you're at Black Flag yeah, Athletics? Yeah, yeah. I, it, uh, it generally, uh, everybody signs up. Uh, the stable of coaches that we have in the past have had a, had a draft, I believe, have just taken names out of the hat. Uh, they try and spread yeah. spread everybody out. And uh, then from a gym owner's perspective, and maybe you've had to deal with this in, in the past where uh, there could be themes for each week, usually culminating with a Friday night lights for the final week, which for years was the fifth week, which by then everybody was dragging to get through it. And, and three weeks now, just as it starts, it's finishing. And you might have a celebratory Friday night special, run heats, have an MC, a little bit of food afterwards, and everybody can just celebrate uh, the accomplishments uh, for the for the season. Yeah, we totally did that. When it was five weeks, even when it went down to three weeks, my gym, we would, we, we went all out with it. Like we bought lights, uh, we would have pictures, everybody would bring their own uh, drinks and food. Yeah. It was, it was, <laughs> it was incredibly fun. And I, I'll be doing the open this year in Baton Rouge. So we're currently in Panama City. This is the last Two days, we're in Panama City, and then we're traveling to Baton Rouge. I'll be at Go CrossFit, which is spelled in a true Louisiana style. It's G-E-A-U-X, yeah. I think, is how they're, they spell Go, Go Tigers. CrossFit. There you go. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's been, uh, they've, they've invited me and welcomed me there, so I'm pretty excited to see uh, whatever they have going on. I'm just there to be a participant, to have a good time, to throw down, you know, some workouts, 
and I, I think that the open is for me one it's it's fun it's it's low pressure it's mm-hmm. it's yeah just a time where you know there's three to four hundred thousand people in the world doing this thing at the same time and generally it's a one and done for mm-hmm. me for the crossfit open i i'm generally not retesting them uh do you retest the <laughs> open around this you know in the past couple of years have you retested any of the open the past workouts two years i have not i've learned yeah uh, this will be my 13th open <laughs> um i've not knock on wood, ever missed an open workout. I've been traveling. I've been on vacation with the family. I've been traveling for work. I've managed to find a gym in times and um, slide in, do a workout, have a judge. So I've stressed over repeating many years. And as I found out, you know, usually when you put forth your best effort that first time, uh, that's pretty close to where you're going to land. I've only really ever super improved in a in a meaningful manner when there have been those like time gate workouts. If you can get to the next four minute segment or maybe it was a three minute segment and then you get that many more reps, double unders or chest to bars or something like that, that just uh, advances you that much further up the leaderboard. That from a redo standpoint might helpful might be helpful. But right now, Go in, make sure you have everything set up, your camera, you know, your judge, your floor layout, uh, treat it with the respect that it deserves, like a quarterfinal or a semifinal uh, event, prepare, warm up, give it your best shot. And then I'm going to continue on and train through the rest of the week. That's it's going to be my plan this year. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I think back as soon as I said, I don't repeat or I was thinking about repeating. I, I repeated the first workout in 2021. It was the oh. wall walk and double under workout. Yes. Because I... I felt like I, I felt like I just wasn't my first attempt at it. I just didn't know what I was doing. It, you know, the wall walks were somewhat new in competition, sure. and I didn't really feel found my rhythm in it. So I retested that, and that was that one wasn't uh, as much ego as just I just didn't like how the first attempt went. It just I just didn't feel right. And then the I believe it was the second workout last year was the burpees deadlifts. and the deadlifts. Yep. yep. Yeah, I did that one, and I just straight up was not satisfied with my first attempt. Uh, I did not need to retest it. And it was one of those workouts where it was pretty devastating to the body, just mm-hmm. the amount of reps that you were completing. But I did. I went ahead and I retested it on Monday because I I, I didn't like, I, I just didn't like, I didn't like how the first right. one went. It, it, I, I sold out on the first one. I went in way too hot. I just didn't use my experience. And again, I retested. I did it much, much better. But I don't, it definitely did not have to. And you mentioned uh, recording the workout. You know, it's, unless we're going to win the worldwide open, mm-hmm. We we don't have to record all. these nope. workouts. It's not not required. Nope. But what I do like is I, I do set up the camera. I do record. I actually set up two cameras because I want to have the footage to share on YouTube. I want to be able to do all that. But really, the other reason is I want to start practicing having cameras for these sure. tests because yep. a month after the open, we have to we have to record for quarterfinals. And there's a level of stress that goes into quarterfinals and semifinals in your performance. And then add that additional stress of making sure your cameras. Are, you know, your battery's charged on your phone. You've got a backup camera. Maybe it's a second phone or a GoPro. Making sure you have enough space on your mm-hmm. phone that you don't run out of memory while you're recording a 20-minute workout. And then even testing, uploading to YouTube because every once in a while that'll get stuck. And if you miss the deadline for that's, quarterfinals or semifinals it. on uploading your video, you're out. Yep. That's it. That's your games. And I think you're done. We, I'm sure it happened in many of the age groups, but the when the it happens to the individuals, CrossFit has mm-hmm. drawn a hard line in the sand. You know, we're sorry. You know, you yeah. just didn't just didn't That's submit it. the score in time, and they could probably show You're video done. proof and all, and it doesn't matter. So, uh, yeah, I, I do it. Just I've done it more recently, uh, just for the practice. I don't I don't have the uh, you know uh, need to to share it out there because it just it, it just it's good to practice. It's good to go through the the routines uh, and, and get familiar with everything again, because, you know, 95% of your training right now, you're setting up, you're just, you're just finding a corner of a gym to do whatever's on the schedule that day. I mean, I don't care where I stand and where my bar is and where anything is at, but those workouts matter. They matter. And it's, it's such good practice. The equipment list was released for the open and we've got, maybe we'll stop on the ones that are particularly interesting. So there's barbells. That's barely standard, Mm -hmm. uh, standard bumper plates, no big deal. Dumbbells, also pretty standard, um, 20 to 70 pounds. So that could get heavy if we end up using 70 pound dumbbells yeah, for some reason. That's interesting. Um, kettlebells. It is interesting. Let's go, let's go back to those dumbbells. Uh, there is an asterisk there. I wanted to see what that asterisk. Uh, no, that's just, that's something okay. else. But the official weight is in pounds. Okay. So they have acceptable weights in kilograms, but pounds from 20 to 70, which means Ooh. we may be getting to 70 pound dumbbells. I hope your age group, not mine. Which is 
<laughs> I love I love a good seventy pound dumbbell. Depending on the movement, if it's if it's farmer carries, I'm not a big fan, as it's just awful. But if it's dumbbell snatches, that's fine. If it was like a single arm devil press, that'd be pretty brutal. But it, you know, we do have Bosman programming the open in full this year. I think the open workouts last year were programmed by it's Castro too, before. Right? I'm sure. Yeah, now we got Bosman straight through. And Very we'll see how he wants to or is able to kind of weave themes and threads from from the open through the different stages. And, you know, the elites will be right. all in person for semifinals where age groups and adaptives will not. Uh, and then he'll take those themes right. and continue all the way through to the games uh, for those fortunate to, to make it that far. So we'll see if it starts now. And then and we'll it, look it, back in six months and go, ah, yeah. now I know yeah. why he did that. Uh, yeah, here, here we go. And he, he, tell, he, he tried to tell a story at the games when I was watching the documentary. He was definitely trying to express himself in the games as opposed to, you know, what the games looked like with Castro. And I, I think he navigated that really well. But I know he was nervous because he threw out some things that he was a little, like, I hope they can do this kind mm -hmm. of thing. But this is going to be a fun year. And I, I wonder what story he's going to tell. But as we go through these standards or these this equipment, we've got kettlebells. Now, and that's interesting. We had kettlebells in semifinals last year for farmer mm -hmm. carries. Right. These kettlebells go from 16 kilograms to 24 kilograms to 32 kilograms. 32, those are the heavy ones. Those are what we used it in our semifinals last year when mm -hmm. we had a farmer carry, legless rope climb, box, box jumps. High box jumps. Right? I think they were 30 inches. Yeah. 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 Do you think we'll do kettlebell I, swings or do you think we'll farmer carry those? We could very easily farmer carry those again or do some type of yeah. uh, kettlebell deadlift. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Because be nice. I think yep. CrossFit has run into problems when they've tried to do kettlebell swings from a judging perspective. And I, I think yeah. they had issues yeah. at uh, regionals years and years back. And it shows you how long we've been in this in the sport. Uh, mm -hmm. If you try mm -hmm. to apply kettlebell swings and have local judges in your own gym judge, uh, huge complete mess. mess. And yeah. I think Adrian has the experience yep. to say, no, we have other creative ways to, to hurt you with kettlebells. And uh, we'll leave the yeah, swings for training. <laughs> to yep. make it clear. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm keep it, yeah. The med balls, Stay, standard, yep. standard, standard weights. Doesn't say anything about heights, but standard For the weights. open, they'll keep them standard. Uh, plyo boxes. Yeah. I think yep. they'll keep, yeah. Plyo boxes, 20 inches, 24, and 30 mm -hmm. inches. We could get tall. Could get tall. The fact that it says 30 inches means that we, we could get tall in the open on those. Gymnastics rings. Two movements that, in my mind, come up on uh, with gymnastics rings. I Ring muscle-ups, <laughs> obviously. But have you ever done toes to rings? Have yeah. you ever... If you're done a big how set of those, this, how yeah. about this week? <laughs> I could thank my coach for that. Yeah, did you yeah, really? He had <laughs> it, it was a it was more of a flow piece, and uh, there were it was rounds of twenty eight at a time. And I'll tell you what, you get into a nice rhythm, it, you're able to knock out again. Everybody's at their own different level of uh, uh, abilities and things like that. But I, I would start to feel those getting upwards closer to twenty. I'm like, even though you have a nice rhythm going and you're able to swing like you would normally. Uh, in a in a ring muscle up doesn't matter your core begins to to hurt um, toes to rings so yeah very much I'd bet a dollar it's it's toes to rings and then it would be interesting if it was like toes to rings on round one and then round two ring muscle ups bumps up to uh, ring muscle ups could be interesting who knows concept two rower that's fun I wish they'd introduce yep. other pieces pull up bar but, uh, other I know I, don't I think, know um, the universe or the you know CrossFit universe has. Everybody has access to a ski erg or, uh, yeah. you know, different bikes. Echo an echo bike, bike. Probably still bike. have, yeah. still have yeah. uh, assault bikes in their, their gyms, which is fine because those are just as dangerous. But once you go with assault bike, you can't <laughs> ask people to be on an echo bike and then compare. It's just not standard. I think the rower yes. is the, rower is Does the way not. to go right now. It's this. It's a standard. And pull-up bar for pull-ups, toes to bars, or muscle-ups, potentially, Perfect. including but not limited to pull-ups, toes to bar, muscle-ups. Wall space. Um for potentially, but not limited to, wall walks, handstand push-ups, mm. wall ball shots. All right. So not Let limited to those. You, those are the things that... Would you do. rather have wall walks for a third year in a row, or would you have, rather have those ridiculous standards of uh, handstand push-ups where you're measuring half the distance from your elbow to your below your wrist and six inches? And I got so confused, oh. and we know the community pretty much revolted against that. Yeah, and it was those tough. Were ridiculous standards. You know, when it came down to it, I liked those handstand push-ups. Those favored my my body portions. In full extension, upside down, I had an inch and a half or so mm -hmm. uh, clearance mm -hmm. for my heel where the tape mark was. There were others in in this in the same gym with just slightly different body proportions that had to reach their every heels single for every one. rep. Yep. So that's that's out. I would say, I mean, I'm ready for wall walks. It, it, it could be there. I also think that there could be wall walks and and wall facing push-ups. Yes, he introduced that, them last year. That wall facing push-up showed yep. up at the games. Yeah. 
it could be interesting. So we've, I know that all, all mm-hmm. of us in our training have yep. been playing with that, and they are really a different stimulus. You don't stimulus. have to do them deficit. Um, there's no you kipping. Just, they're, they're difficult just on no. the wall. Straight up. Straight up. Plenty hard. And again, that's one of those complex movements that I think we'd see week three. I don't think we would see that in right. week one, even week two. I think that's one of the, a higher skill movement if they were to bring that in. We've got a clear floor space, 25 feet. So we can <laughs> shuttle obviously do shuttle runs. Carries, we can do handstand walking. Walk, handstand walking. Yep. Carries. And then climbing rope and GHD, but those are asterisks because those may be required for later stages of online Bingo. competition. And we've had climbing ropes and GHDs for the past two years. So we, we for the most part, expect and that. I do not. I could stand corrected, but I don't think we've ever had a rope for an open workout. No. It's always been no. something online. And that's and, fine. Absolutely fine. It's fine. And I think I think one of the most dangerous things in the gym is the climbing right. rope. When it comes down to it, when you're uh, incredibly fatigued and you're on top yep. of the rope, you're 15 feet up there and most gyms yep. don't have crash mats. So I, when I owned a gym, I was always nervous when someone was doing their first attempt at climbing the rope to the top because I can't yeah. catch them. Remember, the um, open isn't the open <laughs> is inclusive. Try. The easiest, easiest way so to get inclusive. some momentum back. Yep into our sport from uh, a community perspective is to let everybody participate and you can so true. you can tweak these uh these movements and go higher skill as you advance as you should uh but i would not you know i'm no one saying this here but no one's gonna listen to me but you, you, i don't think you ever do things like that in the open you know just it's usually been a capacity test take your take your yep. medicine and move on and demonstrate yes. your fitness not your, not Correct. not more than that. So, uh, as before we move on from the open, and then I, well, I've got the, the two announcements that came up from CrossFit mm-hmm. about the games. I thought were kind of interesting. Do you predict that we'll have any repeats from previous years this year, or will we have all repeats or a fresh start, I, completely fresh? Last year there was no repeats. So, so what do yeah, you think I this think year? I think we go back yeah. with only three weeks. Remember, in the past with five weeks, it was very easy to throw in a repeat. It was a great way to measure the progress that you've made and you know, see how you stacked up against your friends in the gym uh, and and worldwide. I think with three weeks, that's very, it's tricky. But since we didn't have one last year, as a non-betting man, but a favor, favorite of the sport, I'll say yes, we'll have a repeat. Uh, and I also think we'll, okay, yeah, you I say yes. yes. And I also think in the third week, we'll do something again with pull-ups, chest to bar, something like that, and thrusters. I mean, every year, how many times did we end with oh. three, three, six, yes. six, nine, nine, or yeah. terrible 27 yep. on down with, you know, rowers and burp. I mean, yes. just awful combinations but i think we're going to get to thrusters again i i i think if we think back to the the origins of crossfit and one of the original workouts in crossfit being fran the combination of thrusters and pull-ups and knowing that almost every year in the crossfit open we have finished with some version of pulling and pushing in that sense i i think that's one of the most challenging and best capacity tests possible is pushing and pulling in combination it is it's a recipe for pain like like you never ever feel yeah. and, talk and so about, why not talk that's about, that's you know we do this once a year uh, we might as well the, the nerves that get in i mean even for the seasoned competitors who've been through open after open yeah. nothing hits they know. your, you your just stomach know, more right? than that combination and i <laughs> no not I think at all early on 2012 or 13 uh give me fact checked on this i think we went to like 105 pounds on on thrusters, which was a little unusual. Mm-hmm. In fact, we should look that up. And if I need to be corrected, someone correct me. But I, I think it was just yep. different enough, and it slowed you down. Again, everybody was at such yep. different stages of their fitness way back then. But but 105 made such a difference over 95. I'm sorry, and it might have been 75. It, 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 mess, it does. It messes everything up. Yeah, yeah. It's just enough to tweak you. I mean, it it was like throwing a wall ball to 11 feet instead oh, of 10 feet. It was terrible. It's a completely Awful. different movement. Awful. Completely different. Yeah. So bring it, CrossFit. We're ready. We'll take it. Whatever you got, we're we're ready. And uh, we're going to face it with a smile. So the CrossFit announcement for 23.1 have the date up here. The announcement is February 16th, which is a week from Thursday. When this gets released, it'll be a week from Thursday. 2 p.m. Central Time, so uh, noon Pacific. You can do the math from that. But noon Pacific, it's a Thursday. They'll release it. It's exciting. I mean, just shut down everything so you can watch that announcement live uh, on my YouTube channel. I'll go live during the announcement so that I can respond to the announcement and, and share some strategies because I just really love I love brainstorming. It's it's just one of the biggest announcements of the year. So I am excited for that. And most of us will probably do that uh, event, the workout 23.1 on that Friday. Yeah. And the score is due by Monday at 7 p.m. Yeah, my time. So my time. 5 p.m. Yeah, yeah 5 p.m. Yeah. Pacific time. I've always done this in, in Colorado. I've always 
in my mind knowing that it's 6 p.m. And now that I'm in different time zones all the time, my time zone calculator is broken. It just permanently, I have no idea where we are in time. Two pieces of news that came out this week, and we'll just keep this super brief because it, it doesn't, doesn't matter that much. Yep. But uh, the CrossFit Games will be in Madison for another two years as opposed to the news earlier where it was going to be in Madison in 2023 and 2024 was moving to Birmingham, Alabama. Are you cool? Are you happy that it's in Madison for two years? Well, or what I, were your initial you know, thoughts? I don't have the experience up there that you do, certainly, but I enjoyed my time up in Madison. And I thought it was, uh, I thought the city yeah. did a nice job of welcoming the CrossFit community. I have, I had gone to the games as a spectator out in Carson for two years. And that was Really fun, a great experience. But when you realize how small uh, the games were compared to, you know, the greater Los Angeles area, it didn't matter a thing. Where, you know, last year when they ran that Capitol event and the amount of roads that they had to shut down and that all the area around the state Capitol yeah. and you saw the crowds build, um, that's, I don't think that happens in a larger metropolitan area. So I'm excited about that. Although it was, it's hard to believe now as cold as it is up here in the North and the Midwest, but uh, it was pretty hot and humid there. It, uh, if you, oh, if you it go is down hot. to Birmingham and, in August, yeah. oof, that would have been, that been brutal. <laughs> that was, that, that was one of our biggest concerns, Birmingham in the summer. Like, okay, I guess we're going to have to get used to that. Half the, um, half the country doesn't been care Madison, what we say. I went, They're like, we live here. <laughs> Come on care. down. Yes, that's, that's the standard. I've been to Madison now, I mean, so many years in a row. So 2017 as a spectator. And then uh, 2018, I qualified and went to the games and have gone to the games every year that it's been held, except for 2020, which was uh, the, the year of COVID. But I've been there every year. And I agree. I love Madison. It's a beautiful city. They they welcome CrossFit. When you go into a hotel and on the sliding doors of the hotel, there's, you know, a games athlete on there. You know, it's Brooke Wells or Justin Medeiros or Matt Frazier or something. It's it, the whole city is just painted with CrossFit. It's very exciting. Now, I'll tell you what's really weird. The past couple of years traveling in the RV, I've arrived there a week early or two weeks early. And so the full week before the CrossFit Games, you would never know that the CrossFit Games are happening in Madison. It is just this, this regular is town. Usual. There's nothing. And then all of a sudden, over a weekend, the entire, you know, the, the Coliseum gets transformed. That whole area transforms into the Games venue. And downtown, just all of a sudden, there's banners, CrossFit Games stuff everywhere. So that is that is really cool. You know, I know that for Masters athletes in particular, we were thinking, well, one, and we'll talk about this in one of our other episodes uh, in more depth, but we were thinking, you know, they only have 10 of us going to the games this year, as far as we know. Uh, only 10 went last year. So you had to qualify top 10 out of semifinals to, to earn your ticket to the games. In the prior year, in 2021, it was the top 20 athletes out of semifinals that went to the games. Mm -hmm. And I'll just go back in time. 2019, it was the top 10. 2018, it was the top 20. So the four times I've been there, it's gone 20 qualifiers, then 10 qualifiers, then 20 qualifiers, then 10 qualifiers. That's, That's a little crazy. That's the biggest gripe from the and community, I, know I think, that is, would you say? That, would you would you put it's, something down and stick with it? Because how do you yeah. how do you get any consistency with their planning? And I know they've gone through layoffs and a pandemic and different uh, leadership changes and stuff. But still, it doesn't give the age groups uh, a lot of confidence. You know, heading into the season, like what are the rules this year? <laughs> What's going on? I don't know. The interesting thing is in 2021, the schedule for the Masters athletes competing in Madison. I was there. So we competed Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and we overlapped with the individuals, I believe, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So we competed first, we finished, and then I was able to watch the games the rest of the weekend as a spectator. And that's what happened in 2021. And it was really fun to be done with my competition and just sit back and be the, a fan of the sport because we had tickets because... My, you know, my family was watching me at the game. So we had tickets and we continued to go for the rest of that weekend. It was really fun. But they had a schedule Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and it was just us and the adaptive athletes. And there were 20 of us that year, plus adaptive athletes. And it seemed like that was that was a really nice setup because it could allow for a larger athlete pool with that dedicated time. Now, last year, we overlapped with individuals and teams. We were all basically competing together, but we had smaller yeah. groups of of elite of, of uh, masters athletes so there were only 10 of us this year they changed the schedule back to what it was in 2021 now we have tuesday wednesday thursday again dedicated to masters athletes and adaptive athletes the question i have in my mind and the and the thing that i just I, there's a glimmer of hope in my mind and i i know it's really far-fetched but if they went back to the schedule from two years ago might they in some announcement very soon say hey guys we've decided to go with 15 or 20 qualifying spots 
because we've we've adopted this schedule, we've freed up the space, we've 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 locked into Madison, and because of that, we've doubled the amount of qualifying participants in the games. And if they did that, I swear I would fly to whoever made that decision and hug them personally. Because that it is a really great experience to have twenty people there. You are making this is a bucket list item for thousands and thousands of masters athletes just qualifying for the games. And when you have to thread the needle so tightly to get 10 people, you have to make it in to the top 10. It's almost impossible. But 20 really opens it up to a lot of people being able to participate in that game's experience, which is unlike anything else. Every other comp I'm going to get off this. I'm I've been talking too long already on this, but you know, Legends is a, is a great experience. Waterpalooza is really fun. The Masters Fitness Collective, these are all these are all things that we can participate in but but the, it's just having that many more people you're uh, the more the merrier 100 percent run two heats in a couple of, of a couple of those events which we we saw just recently in legends down in mm -hmm. the, i mean that was uh that was a, a, a an excellent field and it was there was strength from top so to bottom with greater than 10 athletes i yep. mean it was you know i know that they have logistics to consider but boy you look at these other events and they're able to run with larger fields and that's why you just wish that that would be the case. Well, if I'm a betting man, I would, and I am a betting man. I just don't ever right. bet that much, really. But I would bet, and I'd bet a nickel that that there's a. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's how much I'm willing there. to risk. One nickel that they're going to bump it up to, to twenty for this year. Um, I just got this glimmer of hope. But mm -hmm. uh, moving on, we are about to wrap up this episode. But before we do that, one of the traditions I think that we want to incorporate into our podcast is picks of the week, it, where we want to share a tip or a piece of gear or something specifically that, that, that we use all the time that maybe not everyone does. But but as far as uh, a pick of the week, Rick, what is what is an app or a, a piece of gear? What's what's a a, a pick of the week for you. What do you have in your bag or, or in your tool chest? No, no, I'm not the most, uh, I don't have the most mobility. Somehow I just keep putting one foot in front of the other. So I really, this year made it a point to work on my mobility. Uh, everybody has a favorite app or a favorite routine. I'm just choosing to, to use pliability. Uh, and I'm making a point as often as possible, trying to hit every night, not saying I do, but trying to, to go through a routine and just try to stave off some of those aches and pains that we're all getting. No one's getting any younger. And what we put ourselves through with the constant training, I think just, you know, committing to a program to really help your overall level of uh, just feeling better and being able to move more efficiently is uh, should pay off. That's what I'm going to bank on. That's what I'm going to bet on. Let's put it that way. Mm. No, <laughs> nice. It's yeah. so our betting episode. Super Bowl. I, yeah, I'll tell you what, I, I would, I, as a betting man, I, <laughs> that sounds good. I would bet that uh, pliability is beneficial. I, I put all my money on that one for sure. My pick of the week is uh, the RX Smart Gear Evo G2 Speed Rope. It was a rope that was actually introduced to me by Luke Parker when I was visiting Mayhem. Yeah, he said it was a, an absolute game changer for him. And I felt it. I, I did a couple of double unders with it, and I, I really liked it. So I contacted Arc Smart Gear, told them I was interested in, in that rope, and uh, they actually sent me a handful of ropes to demo, to test out. And I'm going to I put a video out on my YouTube channel in the near future reviewing these versus what I have been using in the past. And what I like about this, uh, the Evo G2 speed rope is the handles have some weight to them. So there's a lot of feedback in, in the motion of my hands with the handles. I really like that. And the bearings in these things, like there's actual bearings the okay. in the handle. So I could, I could feel that rope moving and feel the bearings turning. Like I feel like, I feel like I can really beat the crap out of this rope and it's just, or the handles at least, and it's going to last forever. The rope is really easy to change. I'll tell you my only gripe, and I'm saying this tongue in cheek, is that they asked me what my height was and I told them. And so they sent me two ropes, two lengths uh, with this rope. And one is eight foot six and one is eight foot two on the rope length. I put the eight foot six on and I, I kept tripping. It was really tricky. as just didn't make sense to me. And I measured my old rope that I was using, which was an RPM speed rope. I had a nine foot Whoa, rope okay. on there. So I took six inches off tripping. that. And I reached out to them and I said, hey, I was, well, I said, hey, guys, can you guys send me a nine foot rope? And they said back and they said, Jason, you know, you're you're five foot eight. You really should be able to to be using an eight foot two rope. But if you can if you can master the eight foot six, that's really where you should be. And so they're the experts. So I've been working on this slightly shorter rope and uh, every every chance I get to be working on this in training, it's getting better and better and better and better. But I'll tell you, after doing after having such a long rope for years and years, it 
is quite an adaptation for my brain to actually let my shoulders and hands relax even more and keep from scooching out, which shortens the rope. Yeah. Got to keep my hands by my side. So it's forcing me to be in a better position. It's forcing me to be better at the double unders. So uh, it's the rope is, is good. I really like the rope, but I also just appreciate the fact that they, without solicitation are giving me best tips and practices and they're helping me that's become a, a better excellent. athlete. And I mean, that's just, yeah, they're great people. I'll, I'll great save people. mine for next week, but I'm going the other well, way. <laughs> I'm going back over, over to the RPM side. I'm, <laughs> I'm still playing with rope length right now. So I've got some time, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> All right. We'll talk about it. Well, guys, this is our first episode of hopefully many episodes um, in the Masters in Movement podcast. We, we really want to be able to share our thoughts, our feelings, and be able to you know, share the voice of Masters athletes in this space and also just have a chance to geek out on CrossFit because we love this sport. With that said, thanks for tuning in to Masters in Motion, where we help you embrace your potential for remarkable fitness at any age. If you found this episode to be helpful, we'd be truly grateful if you could take a moment to leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or your preferred podcast app. Your support helps us reach more listeners, grow our community. Until next time, get bolder, not older, guys. See ya. See ya.